it's about getting into schools and talking to young people because you know I, I know that people can change uh, and, it, and it's about talking to people and getting them to understand and perhaps step back from violence and, and prejudice and whatever and we just need to work together and keep on the good fight there absolutely Hey there guys, we are ecstatically happy to announce that we are associated with the Sophie Lancaster Foundation. The times are changing and with the unfortunate death of Sophie, those changes have made a massive impact for the future. If Sophie was with us still today, I can guarantee what you are doing will still be reaching so many lives of young teenagers, young adults and those who wish to be as different as possible so thank you very much to find out more about this incredible foundation and all the work they do and more importantly how you can help head on over to www.sophielancasterfoundation.com hi my name is Juska Salminen musician youth worker and a producer and you're listening chronicles of podcast with Tom and Jamie Hi guys, it's the Chronicles of the Podcast. Yep, and you'll wonder why we're doing a little bit of this. Yeah, alright, okay. Because um, it's the Chronicles of the Podcast, the 56th edition, Jamie. 56! And these, right here, right here, these right here, because this little tiny segment there, are the Chronicles of Yuska Salmonen. And if you're not familiar with Yuska, this is where this comes from. Watch the interview, you'll love it. Uh, Jamie, should we get on that road? I think we definitely should. Head it! But I do believe, Jamie, it's time to bring that bit, that finish piece in. Oh, that finish piece. Oh, yes. Oh. That, that, that little bit of Finnish piece. Welcome to the Chronicles of Yuska Salminen. Yuska is a mental health advocate. He's a uh, motivational speaker. And he is also known for being a keyboardist in one of the biggest Finnish powerhouses. That is him. This, oh, this conversation is so incredibly beautiful. Yeah, it's great. Oh. I, I randomly stumbled upon Yuska on social media and I was like, ah, oh, this guy was awesome. Like he replayed on one of my favorite albums of all time, literally top five album of all time. Then I was looking into him first. I was like, what's he doing now? And I was like, holy shit, I need to reach out to this guy. Like this guy is amazing. He has done some incredible things. And you are going to find out, ladies and gents, this conversation is absolutely stunning. Yeah, it's it's pretty. I mean, I don't really want to go into it too much. As you can see in the trailer that Jamie dropped, he didn't actually put much of the interview in uh, no. to say, yeah, to save just how absolutely wonderful it is. You also noticed at the beginning of the episode we did a silly little dance. Uh, if you watch the interview, you'll now understand what that dance means. Uh, Yuska also played uh, on the Razorblade Romance album made by here, which is Jamie's one of Jamie's favorite albums of all time. Mwah! So. And I've, I've got to say, since we did this interview, all I've listened to is him. Like, I've not stopped listening to them. I said him or the band him? Oh, a bit of both, really, because I've been listening to that album. And the first album, because it just reminded me how damn good it is in this conversation. So, yes. Yeah, it's pretty, Thanks pretty for tasty. That, <laughs> yeah, me. Yes, sir. Any words at all of yours that you want to deliver that are possibly final? Just a massive thank you to our wonderful guest. It always means so much to us where a guest comes on and they're talking to com- two complete and utter strangers they've never met before and pour their heart out and talk about traumas and experience in their life. And it really means the world. People put that trust into us. And Yusuke delivered on that tenfold. So thank you so much, my friend. It me- really means the world. Uh, absolutely, Yuska. Thank you so much for taking the time out to speak to us, my friend. Sit down and chat. We really, really enjoyed it, even though you are two hours ahead. Um, so obviously I think it went quite late to the night, but it was it was just so worth it. And I really hope you guys enjoy this one. It's a fucking doozy. Music. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. 
Ladies and gentlemen, interviewing this week, it's Yuska Salminen. We have, when we start, should I say something of your queen? Is it like, is it to you more as a nation <laughs> because it's a bit of weird for us? Is it okay to say I'm sorry for your loss or something? Of course, yeah, we appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's yeah. been a weird one because it's like you don't know her personally, but she's mm. been there your whole life. Exactly, exactly. It's, because that is that is because we don't have we have prime minister and the president, so we don't connect in that sense. I don't even know how it can be, but like she's been there even for us in the newspapers. So, but if someone would die kind of here, I I I don't think it would be exactly the same. We don't have mm. that sort of a kind of like you know, um, in our hearts. That's you might. Know, yeah, we, it's it's weird. It's more of like a cultural, comfortable thing. Like I said, it's all we've ever known our whole life. Our mm. money's going to change. Our stamps are going to change. Everything's yeah. going to change. It's it's weird. Yeah, yeah. It, it must be. It must be. Uh, it, it, where do I? <laughs> it looks like I'm watching there. But anyways. Because my camera is somewhere here, and I'm trying to watch your face. So, anyways, well, I am what I am. <laughs> it's fine. The other eyes there, another there. Sometimes, <laughs> like you're watching a tennis match. Yeah, at the same time. <laughs> Beautiful. What yeah. I'm, what we normally do with this is I just do a little introduction, welcome you into the show, and then, as my co-host likes to say, we just bombard you with questions. How does that sound? Lovely, lovely. <laughs> Beautiful. Let me get my intro out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, today we bring you another wonderful guest and our first guest from the most metal country there is, Finland. Today's guest is a musician, a teacher, a youth worker and just an all-round wonderful person. A man who has performed on one of my top five albums of all time. Which one? Keep listening and you'll find out. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the chronicles of Juska Salmanen. Did you know your surname or not? I was going to say, did I get the surname? It, it's perfect. <laughs> I don't even lie. It's really good. It's really yes. good. Oh, yeah. good work. Get in there. That's yeah, 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 you're starting with a really good one. <laughs> Both of you. <laughs> um, but, Yuska, I feel that we should ask, you know, the, the hardest of hitting questions to start with. How was your pandemic season? See, I know it's still going on-ish, but how was the pandemic for you over there? Uh, it's kind of like, I don't know if we're forgetting it, but like the war in Ukraine is kind of like all over the news. So yeah, basically yeah. even my wife is, uh, she's on a sick leave now, but she, she was a nurse. She is a nurse in, uh, what you call, uh, she's taking care of, uh, COVID patients. So mm -hmm. basically, uh, we are not wearing masks anymore. I don't know the numbers even anymore because they don't. We can't read it in the news because they are not in the news. But we live pretty much normal life. I and you, yeah. How is it there? Yeah. yeah, same. Like it never happened almost. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of like a. I was just like a, I'm gonna be in a seminar next week in a youth seminar and. Uh, I'm going to be the host there. So this is really great for me to be a guest here so I can relax. <laughs> so uh, I was just reading my works, uh, studies from school. And uh, there was my study when the uh, COVID hits, when the government, government closed all the youth houses. So it feels so far away already. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's not present anymore. It was a silent enemy and now, now we can even like read it from it anymore yeah it's almost like we live with it now mm, yes yeah yeah I, I didn't have it like as far as i know that's good that's really good mm. i had it twice mm. and it's not okay not pleasant okay. not pleasant. okay no. I, I had it the once but it wasn't too severe just a bit tired that was, didn't get me too bad to be fair but, yeah yeah but one no. of my friends friend uh face paralyzed the half of it so basically that one wow. yeah it's because of covid it was there before but it like launched it if you can say it that way and uh that was a eye-opener for me that it's serious as well because that was like it was hanging like he could turn it into a joke 
even. And, and I was like, come on, you can't choke in a way that you hold your face like this and the other way, eyes going like, <laughs> and I was like, okay, free-ish, but he's okay. <laughs> Good, so that place is all right. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. But tip of the hat to your wife for the work she did as well, like looking after the sick patients, like fair play to her. Fair play to her. Yeah. She was like him from uh, uh, those movies using those masks, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So, Yuska, take us back. Obviously, you're known for being a musician, but take us back. What did you want to be when you grew up, when you were a little boy? Um, I I didn't have any of that kind of, like, dreams. I, first, what I remember, there was a, a really uh, well-known ski jumper from Finland called Matti Nykänen. And uh, he used to want, like, four Olympics, if I remember right. He was only 18 when he got this huge prizes and like he went up like this sort of kind of like uh i can compare it to my in one point but like a massive scale bit younger and like uh everyone was kind of like he's the greatest star so i wanted to be him but he had a really difficult life afterwards when fame went away so he ended up dying a few years ago because of alcohol and all the other kind of like, uh, he went really down. So I didn't want to be him, that kind of person. But he was sort of a hero for every little kid. And he came to my home city in Kowala as well to jump after the uh, bigger competitions. They came to Kowala as well. And I remember my hand reaching. There were hundreds of kids and he took my you know, paper, piece of paper and book for the signature. I'm like, I can <laughs> goosebumps. <laughs> I'm <laughs> That's amazing. I'm, I'm speaking goosebumps to myself. That's kind of like egoistic. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyways, I wanted to be him. And I don't know if I, re- uh, I was like seeking for the feeling more than to be specific something as an occupation or mm. I, I didn't want to, I, I didn't, wanted to be famous or anything i just wanted the feeling i guess i get what you mean, I, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. I get what you mean yeah. so where did the uh, the love of music come from then uh the music came from i guess from father and uh, it did it did like uh we got piano pretty early on early stages and uh they kind of forced me to my uh, and my brother to go to piano lessons. I think it's a pretty common story with every kid. I don't know anyone who is going like, yeah, I want to go to play piano. <laughs> or maybe, maybe some, but like uh, the first teacher was really bad. Okay. And my, 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 my brother, like, you know, not in a way that she couldn't play, but she was awful as a teacher, okay. So, okay. Kind of, as a personality. So my father quit straight away. And I just like, okay, can I try another one? And uh, the next one was the, what do you call the person who plays in the church? Uh, organist? The key- organist, yeah. <laughs> the keyboard player of the church. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds way more metal. We'll go with yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so he was teaching me and he was much more inspiring. And like uh, that was kind of like how I got into playing. And then we had keyboards as well. Uh, at home and uh, I rehearsed um, three years and then uh, it started to be a bit too much over after studies and uh, like school and I got kind of bored and then I started to learn by listening Hmm. and with the keyboards you can kind of like play themes and like jingles like different tv shows Parts of them, and it was more, more kind of like Beverly Hills High and MacGyver <laughs> and that kind of stuff. So I was lazy in that sense, and uh, it's kind of a pity in a way that I think that was the main reason later on that I couldn't stay at the level, but maybe a bit later of that one. But like, uh, it just wasn't time for me. I played soccer. And uh, I studied hard. My mom and dad were teachers both, so it was a bit too much. But, yeah, and music, listening-wise, uh, first there was Kiss. 
and Twisted Sister, but there was as well Sandra and uh, some of the folks. So it's kind of like a sexy rock and roll combination. <laughs> <laughs> so I read somewhere you were you were a techno guy. You like techno music, was that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's true. That that's kind of like I I've always loved to dance, and uh, that's. That was it, it hit me at the uh, prodigy time, it was the highest peak. Before prodigy, there were a bit like uh, underground techno, and uh, then prodigy came to play in Finland, and I was 16 at the time. And uh, I remember what uh, going to see them, and uh, I was touching Keith Flint there to the shoulder when they asked everyone to come to uh, dance on the stage, and I was like, Whoa, he looked at me. <laughs> so again, the feeling. <laughs> I know what it. I didn't want to be uh, Keith, but I, I just I got the vibe so much that like, uh, yeah, I love the, I, I love techno and I love dancing, and I won a dance competition in uh, Brighton when I was in <laughs> <That's insane. laughs> so, right school. Yeah, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what made you want to start playing? in bands and playing music professionally then? Uh, I never I never actually wanted to play as a profession. And still even, it feels like I never kind of played in profession, you know, like a professionally, even I hit the heavy league, literally. Uh, there was a band called The Swampies. The Swampies, how do you say? Yeah, my friend built it up, and it was like uh, lyrics from the B movies. You know, they there was something like, uh, "There's something strange in the neighborhood, something lurking, something yeah, kind of yeah. like." Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and I was a singer. It was kind of like a punkish, rockish band, and uh, it was the first band, and it was fun, and. Then came Marianne, which she used to be to die for, and they wanted to have a keyboard player because uh, they changed their direction more from glam rock to gothic rock around mm. 1997, 98. And they asked me uh, to play there, and I only got to play in Marianne for half a year or so before I joined him. So it was kind of like I didn't have any, <laughs> I didn't dream to be in a professional music career in any point i didn't even have time for it <laughs> <laughs> it just sort of happened <laughs> yeah it, yeah it, it actually it did it happened so fast so so how did you go from playing for six months in that band to then joining him how did that happen um this is kind of like i'm thinking if i tell the longer version or a short version <laughs> I go for the long version. Yeah. So basically, let's go back to prodigy time. Uh, I was in high school. It was the second grade, I think. And that was when I had uh, blonde hair and using eyeliner to make the beard a bit darker. <laughs> Just like I wanted to have the beard, which I have now. Now it's gray. I should do it again. But <laughs> grayish, not gray. <laughs> but at that time, I was more of a techno techno dude completely. And uh, then came uh, Marian and uh, Jappe, the lead singer. At, at that time, local bands were still huge bands. Or I, mm. I mean, it, not huge bands, but they, I consider them to be like uh, celebrities, you know, in a sense. Of, I don't think it's the uh, same way anymore. But if you have a... a local band it's not like uh it's easier to get to play and to get your name because of the social media and at that time if you played in a youth club that was a big thing if you played in a uh, in a like a bar it was even more and uh when they asked me to play in the band i got more into gothic music obviously i sucked in the influence and uh that's that there was paradise lost and typo negative so mm. if i wouldn't be in that band i might still be living in the techno <laughs> of, <laughs> not the not, not the 90s dance music by far but uh, sort of more like a 
well, techno music, more, more, well, never knows what would have happened. But then I moved to, oh, what's the next step? I went to army. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah, and uh, we have to go to army. And here it's like obligatory. How do you pronounce yeah. it? Yeah. 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 Nailed it. Cool. <laughs> 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 yeah. But, yeah, anyways, uh, I went there and for the first time in my life, uh, I got depression and I had to quit the army. It was a really, really difficult time for you. I, I thought I'm going to lose my mind. It was back in the 1997. So basically, I didn't know what is happening to me. Everything before that one was oh, really easy. I had a really safe surroundings when I was a child. Uh, I went to secondary school. Everything was okay, and uh, nothing, nothing was wrong. High school, I got a high school love for four years, and not uh, the Beverly Hills kind of life there. But in the middle, I was having time of my life. Then I went to army. And all of a sudden, I kind of like couldn't concentrate anymore. And it went harder and harder and harder. I mean, the point I just had to escape. I, I, I just had to quit it. And I, I went back home. And I was just like, what is going on here? Uh, it feels that someone sucked the brains out of me, the feelings and the emotions and everything. And I was just sitting there with a, like, a clip, like my eyes, kind of like I didn't have any spark, maybe a bit of there. And uh, that is the reason I moved to Helsinki at that specific time, because then I, when I started to feel a bit better, I applied to school and got in to a restaurant school. And there I met a good friend, Tero, who introduced me for the first time, uh, the first album of him. And that was kind of at the same time I was in Marianne, the Gothic was coming for me, uh, the Gothic music, and then I heard him, and I was like, wow, this is insane. This is absolutely insane. You have the massive guitar riffs and then Villa's voice, and it was like down and up and down and up. And it, I, I think it was because my life had been a bit of the same, first up and then really down. And I started to build myself a bit like as a whole person again. And, uh, yeah, him came in a really good moment. And I've heard several stories that people are saying that him music has helped them. And I can realize it because it helped me back then. And uh, the feeling was really strong at that time. Uh, and now this is a longer version. So <laughs> now we are, but I am living in Helsinki. I've been introduced to him with the album and uh, then there was a person, another friend uh, I got from school was a, uh, who know, uh, knew Patka, the drummer from him at the time of uh, Greatest Love Songs. Yeah. So that was kind of the next step. I, <laughs> you have to understand that I didn't climb the steps to be the keyboard <laughs> player of him, but I kind of like, uh, maybe reach for that same feeling as like with Martin Nukan and the ski jumper mm. to get that autograph, to get that specific special moment to meet Ville. And uh, we first were going to see the first kick of him in Vanta, which is close to Helsinki with Tero, but he wanted to show off and he, in winter, he drew like off from road. <laughs> just before we reached the venue. Not in a way, but in a bad way, oh, good. but still in a way that the car was like, it went off and we couldn't get it off. So we missed the whole gig. No. Yeah. And I was pretty pissed off. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. Be, be that. <laughs> so, but it's, it, it's a good thing because the first gig, I saw was in my hometown here in Kowola. And because we knew our Patka's friend, we got to say to Patka that, like my friend said, that, uh, do you know Villa? He's Villa as well. Uh, 
Oh, it's so confusing. But the, uh, the person who knew that guy is Villa as well. So we got to okay, go yeah. to talk with the same things, kind of like, he's like hey, I know Villa. Like, uh, how do you know Villa? And I'm like, okay, he's my friend from school. And we got to talk. And then he asked in some point that, like, um, do you want to go to after party? And I was like, oh, yeah, I want to go to after party. Of course, <laughs> <laughs> you're my favorite drummer, man. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, then we went to a hotel and uh, in a hotel room in my hometown, I was uh, partying with uh, Batka and I remember Linda, guitar player, was there as well and some technicians. And I was like, what is going on? Now I am there to play, uh, rock in my favorite pants, uh, not rock, but like rocking the party in the hotel room. And uh, uh, that was kind of like I heard that and went there and, Open the door, there was Ville and Mika and Ville says it's like Paskameno, which means like this is shit, and put the door closed straight away. <laughs> there, there he was. I was close to my, you know, my star, my shine star. <laughs> and that was another step. That was another moment. And uh, kind of like maybe I like subconsciously been trying to read Smutti Nukanen my whole life. <laughs> the same feeling again and again when I was a kid. It just like kicked me now. But yeah, that was another step sort of in a way that like I, I got to know the guys. And uh, then it took about a week and then I got a text message from Patka. We changed numbers and I didn't think that like he would ever, ever connect, uh, contact me again. And then all of a sudden, I got a message that, do you want to go and like have a beer with me? And I was like, what, what is going on? Why is, what, what, why is a favorite drummer of my favorite band ever in the world who wants to have a beer with me? So it's kind of like a mystery, this whole freaking world, because him was Metallica for me. It, mm. If Lars would have asked me to have a beer, I was like, <laughs> no, I'm going with Patka. <laughs> it, it's kind of like... <laughs> Yeah, and just try to trying to give you the like the feeling I had at that time, mm. and I went to have a drink with Batka, and uh, it was amazing. I was asking pretty much the same questions that people are asking from me occasionally: that do you get any money, <laughs> and uh, how easy it is to be with uh, with the fame, and like do you get any girls, and all that like same <laughs> same thing is, but it's the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> and uh it was a nice evening and uh that's that was kind of like a third step maybe <laughs> closer to him <laughs> and do you want to ask something in between because this will come eventually no i'm, I'm loving the story i'm loving the story keep going okay yeah and well the next step <laughs> was actually when i was walking uh, i saw bill and uh bass player of Amorphis, uh, Amorphis in one bar. And I was like, okay, now I'm going to be, had a bit of like, uh, how do you, making myself a bit more brave and walked in and said to Villa that I know your drummer. <laughs> can I sit down and like, can I sit down the table? And that kind of like, maybe that's kind of a cruelty kind of thing to do. But anyways, I did. <laughs> so uh, male cruelty. Uh, anyways, yeah, he said actually in some interview Villa in Finnish TV that like uh, they were asking of the new keyboard player and he said that, that there was Juska from Kovala that like uh, he was kind of a male crew who <laughs> tried to get close, <laughs> closer to us. And <laughs> there was a bit of truth in that one. I was going to say, they're not completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not completely. <laughs> but, yeah, no, okay. But I sat down to the table and like uh, I had uh, EP my um, of two, uh, of Marianne's, and uh, mm. it was kind of like I asked, uh, "Do you want to come come to listen to to my car?" And uh, he came there, and I was playing my first demo of my first band to my. <laughs> favorite singer uh, in my car in Helsinki and I was like okay life magical moment again Ville Valo is sitting <laughs> next to me in my crappy car listening to my demo <laughs> I was like it's okay and uh, he 
I gave him my uh, album, uh, The Greatest Love Songs, and he signed it. And uh, there was a year in 1998, and then he put a line and three under that. And it took me quite a while to understand. And it was like 1998 divided with three, and it was 666, obviously. But I didn't get, get, get it at that time. That's clever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, there, that was a one step. <laughs> so uh, the next one, they came to play to Kowala in the same bar. In between that time, I went to festivals, I got to see more gigs, and I got to meet the guys and talk with them more. And it was a really, really, it was really special feeling again for me. I never dreamed of kind of playing in the band. It, it wasn't even in my head. I, I, I didn't even, there was no way I could even imagine that kind of thing. But then they came to Koala and uh, <clears throat> Villa was doing the gig. The gig. He was asking, like, to microphone, that you Scott, can you bring a glass of whiskey to me? And I was like, yeah, I'm in my own town. Villa Valo is asking me to bring a whiskey glass. Of course, I can bring the whiskey glass. <laughs> and that's kind of like that male croupy thing again. But anyways, <laughs> 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 at least they, they, there's nothing sexual in it, so it's okay. <laughs> 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 not a bromance, not a bromance. It's <laughs> but but after the gig, he asked me to kind of like like come sit next to me, and uh, <laughs> this is starting to be a romance. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, and this is like the moment moment of my life. But anyways, that that is uh, the exact moment when he asked that like uh, we had a bit of problems with our keyboard player. And he's not coming to play on a tour that would you like to join us to play the tour in Germany? And that is that is the moment. And that's kind of like, whoa. And that is the moment I go back. That was a long story in a way. There's a shorter story. And that is maybe in between. Because there are kind of many steps to move mm. in that specific uh, question that do you want to come to play the German tour? And the first question I asked was like, how about my own band? Which is really great for me, like Hansen, to think that like I, I have this uh, feeling of, um, uh, what's the English word? That my friends can trust me, like my band members from Marianne. Yeah. And yeah. I'm making a champion decision even when they are asking. I'm pretty, I'm, I'm not proud of many things, kind of like there's a thin line being proud and proud about it. But that's kind of like I'm proud that it came like straight away. But how about my own? And he said, like, hey, you can you can do that, that as well. That this won't take your complete time. Of course, it will take <laughs> everything. <laughs> but I didn't think that back then. But that's kind of the story how I got into band. And that's, yeah, <laughs> it's nuts. I just love the fact that your favorite band and you just. Managed to slowly climb that ladder to being a member of the band. That's mental. Yeah, that, that is. That's a really well used word. Because yeah. I, <laughs> I like complete mental case going down and going back like freakish way in a way. Yeah, it's mental. It's not I'm how, gonna use that word. <laughs> how what? How was the German tour? Uh, German tour before that one, because this is a podcast and you want to hear stories. Chronicles. Oh yes. I have to tell something before that German tour. Uh, the next moment, because this is so uh, mesmerizing and magical, uh, they gave me the album. Uh, the, I had the album, but I had to rehearse the songs. And uh, <clears throat> Villa was going to come to my place to, <laughs> to teach me the songs. So... From that moment in hotel room where they hit the door and said it's a shitty, <laughs> shitty feeling, <laughs> then he wanted to come to my home to teach me his songs. So come on, universe, it's mental. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know the I uh, I fish effect when you watch from the uh, door fish mm. eye, fish yeah. eye, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can hear the buzzer sound. <laughs> 
and then you're going to hear the elevator, and then you're going. Like, I'm watching the, the long hair with the leather jacket is coming and I'm pressing the ding. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm waiting just a second. I'm waiting just a second and open the door and welcome. <laughs> <laughs> And there he was in my studio uh, room and black car teaching me the songs of my favorite band ever. <laughs> and then he left. And then I was just sitting there and like moving around his coffee cup. And like, <laughs> then I feel like after the first date. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, <really. laughs> but yeah. <laughs> So that's how it went. So and it moved on. It moved to, to the next. Do you want to hear the next step? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. So the next step is uh, not a good part of this movie. Uh, I went to rehearsing place and uh, just before we started to play, just when uh, six six six. <sighs> What is the song's name? Your Sweet Six Six. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, when we started to like, and I couldn't get my keyboards on. And it's like, uh, there was this little adapter thing. It had broken. So what are the odds oh. for that one? And there is like, I'm not exaggerating this thing. It, it really happened. And I was like, oh my God, I can play. What can I do? I had just one week before I uh, bought a keyboard from a uh, flea market. And he was back at my home and I just had to went there and ran with a leather jacket and like uh, <clears throat> took a tram there and it was really heavy and I hadn't played it only once before that one. And then I took it there and played with that one. I couldn't hear anything. And it's like, you, you sh it's compa as a comparison, you trying to throw a dart to a dartboard and trying to hit the 10. But as you can't hear anything with the keyboard, you're just trying to play the song. So I was really miserable and I just left the rehearsing place. And I'm sorry that like I play When Love and Death Embrace with a terrible string sound. And there's basically nothing I can do. And then it took a couple of days and my friend uh, put a text message to me and asked like, who is going on a tour? And I was like, me, 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 me. And then he put the cell phone next to TV saying that like, Bill is saying in the TV show that like, okay, that who is going to go to Germany with you keyboard player? Because I've heard that there is some like problems. And then he said that Anto is going to come. There is no problems. And I was like, what the fuck? I heard from the TV show that I'm not going to be the keyboard player of a tour <laughs> from oh. my friend's cell phone. I was like, okay, nice. <laughs> and <laughs> but I felt like someone was hitting me with the baseball bat of like honest come on life with like oh but anyways, that was another step. And another step was after maybe three days, me get the bass player called me and like wanna come here and we went to bar to talk. And he said that like Okay, we have a problems with our keyboard player. But do you wanna still come to play the tour with us? <laughs> I was like, yes, I wanna come to play the tour with us. I, I understand that, like in the big world, there are problems. And then I went to play keyboards, and uh, it went really well, and uh, got a lot of compliments from the band before uh, after that <clears throat> rehearsals, and uh, then we went to German tour. And that was kind of a roller coaster ride, <clears throat> um, emotional. And I can imagine. Yeah. And your question was, how was the German tour? Any, uh, should I go on, or do you have any other questions? We have, we have, we have quite a few. I've got quite a few still, but yeah, but I'm, I'm intrigued about this German tour. Well, Enjoy the story. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'll tell some part of it. So the first kick. Uh, Maybe I, I leave it to the first gig because it's like for me the most uh, precious moment. And mm -hmm. uh, just before when we left, uh, they decided that we have to, or I have to rehearse, enjoy the silence, the best mode, because there wasn't enough songs in the set list. And uh, then it took quite a while for me 
you know, I'm not technically the best player in the world. And when you put the pressure of uh, getting things right in your first quick, uh, uh, your favorite band in the first kick of the first tour to get that do 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 so that you can only concentrate on that one moment. Like when you wake up in the morning, you're just like waiting to get to that show. You're waiting to that specific moment when you get do 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 do, and there are songs before that one, and. In the end, the whole thing, when Batka was just hitting the drums and I'm playing that, it went awesome. So then everything kind of like all the pressure went off. And then I just started, started, I was a member of my favorite band. I was on the top of the world, like the the gig. And uh, then when we went down and our manager, Seppo, came after like half an hour to say that like, hey, do you want to come here? That there are two girls who want your autograph. I was like, mine, oh. only mine. And I was a rock star. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's how you know you've made it. That's amazing. <laughs> so obviously you weren't known by your name in the band. You you had a wonderful stage name. Uh, where <laughs> did the name Zoltan Pluto come from? It's just... <laughs> Uh, you know, I was talking about, about the movie lyrics. Uh, they had kind of like nothing to do with the Swampies band to him. But Bill had watched the movie Hound of Dracula, a B movie. Mm. And the hound was called Zoltan. So as a dog, I don't know if it, it was because of my eyes are beautiful like this. I think that that is kind of like the cute version. The other version <laughs> should be that like they once said that like you go there, dog, and bring us beer or something. Anyways, <laughs> either it's <laughs> in a love it, with all their love, it wasn't kind of like push away. But yeah. even though the, the the dog the dog was the main thing there, so it was Zoltan. And everyone knows Pluto, basically. Pluto is another dog. So basically, it's two dogs. And uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's freaking weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the answer I expected, but I love it. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And when we went to Hungary, I got the, like uh, uh, this mug, the name Max. It's kind of like their Joltan is kind of like a John. So I think you can imagine I go to Hungary and I got Hungarian name with Pluto. It's like <laughs> John Pluto or whatever. It's like okay. Pluto. Zoltan Pluto. It's <laughs> so now I, I still have the muck with the Zoltan. That's oh, awesome. awesome. Yeah. So as I said in my intro, like you performed on one of my favorite albums of all time, that being Razor Blade Romance. But before we get into the nitty gritty of that record and whatnot, thanks to my friend Andy, I discovered what's known as the Slippery When Dead demos. Mm. Um, the songs on those demos, the songs sound a lot more like Greatest Love Songs, that sort yeah. of sound of the band. Do you remember much from those demos? Were you involved in those or was that before you came on board? Uh, I wasn't involved in them, <clears throat> so I'm never taking credit of anything I haven't done. So basically... Uh, I came to already serve table, so that is that is what what happened, and uh, <clears throat> I loved that slippery when dead. I loved the sound. I, I it was exactly what uh, it should have been, <laughs> but yeah. in in my fan mind, in my uh, what I, what I was like, what him was for me. But I think that, and it was kind of like, you can't put Join Me in Death with the five minutes version. And all the drums were with drum machine, kind of like they they weren't live drums. And it was just, it wasn't meant to be. No. So basically then, then uh, ar- arrangements started like from the re- rehearsing place again to come closer to the, ver- uh, or to co- complete to be the version of Razor Blade Romans. And um, yeah, that was a kind of like a mid stage and compromission 
from labels and will, uh, I guess, to move to Razor Play Dramas. Yeah. I was a mere keyboard player. <laughs> I, 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 Ville is a mastermind. You, I, I think everyone knows that. Yeah, that he, he's the genius behind. But there's still room for the band as well. But I guess Linda did a bit more, at least in the first album. And uh, I was kind of like a, how would I say, I was a Prowala, home city, little guy from here, member more than a one of five. Yeah, I get what uh, you mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I didn't mind. It's just like, I, as I said, I don't want to take all the, uh, uh, any credits of anything. I did some arrangement there and there to the songs, but I would love to say that I came up with a, a join me intro, but I didn't. It's just like, a, I, maybe I shouldn't. I would like to be like, yeah, I was the main guy. I an intro there with the millions of listeners and everything, but I played it. <laughs> You play at it at least to the yeah. album. <laughs> That's all that matters at the end of the day. You're known yeah. for playing it on that. Amount. How was the recording the album? Because of memory serves, it was the big names had performed in that studio where you recorded it. Well, that is something. <laughs> if we just was it last year or year before that when Bohemia Rhapsody came to Mulby? Uh, uh, well, what have you seen ago, it? No, yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. For me, when I sat down and watched that movie and saw like the aerial f- clips coming from the same studio, you know, uh, establishment establishment yeah. shot yeah. Yeah. going there, it was like I was like, "Whoa, I was there!" <laughs> and now I'm watching movie like where I was, and uh, no one has ever said so. This is I'm, this one I'm gonna keep to myself that like I don't want to hear. If it's not played with the same grand piano as Bohemian Rhapsody is, because <laughs> I, I, I just I, I, I want to believe that one, and it might be, or it might be not, but I don't want to call to them that was it, because it, it, it's just like the, the understanding of it. Now it, it is even recorded at the same studio where there is like the Oasis, Queen. Well, well, if you don't know, listener, Google out Monmouth. Wells <laughs> studios, so you see the list of this big of yeah. um, <clears throat> different bands, and uh, it was awesome. It was a bit difficult for me as well. Uh, I hate studios. I hate when the rec button, the red button, is on, and uh, I hate mistakes. It's kind of like. Uh, <clears throat> It was starting to be quite pressure at that moment as well that like uh, I wasn't as professional as the others were. So the pressure was building really high. There was John Fryer and I heard all the names, Nine Inch Nails and everything. And I was like, okay, it's really going to the big level. So when you are there and there is a uh, uh, record label is investing a lot of money and there I am. You know, now you heard the story how I got into the band and it didn't take that long time that I'm in Monmouth Studios playing with the grand piano of Bohemian Rhapsody to make the album. So being a little guy, being a fan, being a member of the band, it was all here. So everything didn't go as planned. So I fucked up the first okay can i swear yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> i don't normally swear but i got into the deep memories that, like, <laughs> it, 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 i really don't swear but like that that's it, it wasn't fun obviously if you do work with john fryer and you don't like complete thing is there was programming for the first time to myself i was playing the Marian eb in a demo, demo studio in finland and I, it was played live so if you have to work bit by bit, and I didn't complete it for the first time, so it was really kind of like a, the universe was pressing me down, like pushing me to the small point that like, okay, I just recovered from a deep depression and now I have to like, oh, I have to 
come on, man. Yeah. But, it's, but like all in all, when, when I got over that one, it was really fun. And like we, they forced me to play naked. Uh, one last time and uh, in a good <laughs> way yeah <laughs> if you don't want to if you don't play naked we're going to play there one last time so I was playing one last time naked with the Rhodes piano so that, that's a fun <laughs> and they were actually naked next to me sitting in the lotus <laughs> position <laughs> <laughs> now you're <laughs> humming the spirit in so <laughs> <laughs> fucking brilliant there was a lot of fun. We were watching a lot of movies and uh, there was a chef coming every day making food like what we wanted. And it was <clears throat> it was kind of, I didn't even remember of the chef thing that like he came there, asked what we want to eat. And it was that rock and roll star life. And we wanted to walk up to hills and uh, uh, always... It was a bit boring in some part, but still playing uh, NHL games with gas, we bonded really fast because he and both are hockey fans. And yeah, and guys were doing some funny things while making the album. They're kind of like playing with the capes and just to, to get the get the feeling into it. Mm. And there, that that is awesome because I I have a really open but still quite open, a bit open wood from recording uh, albums in studio. And now I'm doing it, and now it's fun with a, in a band which I'm in now, Reina. But back then it was, it left a real huge, uncomfortable scar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But, yeah. Did you feel like, what's, what's the phrase, imposter syndrome? Was it that sort of thing? Like, you You'd work to get there, but you didn't feel like you should be there, if that makes sense. Uh, in a way, yeah, yeah, it could have been that way. I, I never felt, I, I think I was a fan playing in the middle of him. Hmm. All in all, I never, I always, uh, because as a keyboard player, I was there back in the venue. I was there and I was, <clears throat> I've seen the YouTube clips. Uh, later on, obviously, I would sometimes to go back to history to see that there are quite a few, and there I I can see the show in a way that like other members as well made a bit of mistakes there and there. But for me at that time, everything else was perfect, band all the time, and then there was me, who was mm. just a, like a little guy, little shivering guy. No, anymore at that time when I was playing gigs in Germany for thousands of people because it was in a backspin. I was a rock and roll star at that time, like feeling at it at least. And uh, but in the studio, it was still difficult. It was really difficult because, you, well, you put it pretty well. Maybe I didn't feel like I was supposed to there. I wanted to be there, but I was in an environment <clears throat> and the depression was really close still. So it really took a lot of toll from like from me to put myself together to perform in such a high level. And yeah. everything happened so fast. <clears throat> and obviously that album sent the band into like the stratosphere. Huge hits, yeah. singles, music videos, even for some unknown reason, releasing that album under the band name Her in America. Like, mm. Did you expect the album to be as successful as it was? Uh, <clears throat> Well, there was this uh, misprint, or can you say it that way, that there was only like a, one last time was missing from the album. So we said back then, this is going to be, uh, someone's going to pay a lot of money from this because they, they're going to be collectibles. But uh, I wasn't thinking, I thought that like, because he was growing up before even the album in Germany, we saw that it was like a, more crowd bit by bit, even before uh, the <laughs> explosion. <laughs> but I thought it could happen. And I think that the band felt as well that there is something growing up in Germany. <clears throat> and it was Germany who open heartedly took us. And in the end, we did, and Villa did so much promotional work. He did actually everything. Our manager, rest in peace, Seppo, 
put a lot of effort to get us everywhere. And in the end, I think it was the <clears throat> youngsters who actually made, like when you get the emo sort of music, metal combined to the uh, Edgar Allan Poe, like Ville, to the hearts of youngster teenagers, you hit the jackpot. And then they started to come. Like I, I remember <clears throat> in Berlin or something, they opened the door while I was still like doing something to my keyboards, and they, they were running like youngster teenagers. They were running next to the stage, and I was like, "Okay, I'm going away." So that's the, <laughs> that. That's the difference uh, from what it used to be in Gothic clubs when there are adults with eyeliners and people are dancing like this and like crying and screaming like they <laughs> did later on and uh, the, the one big thing was as well the uh, 13th floor movie mm. um, which was um, released and uh, we had to join me there so that, that helped I've never actually seen that movie I've no idea if it's any good we were in the, the, the opening gala, uh, the premiere, and we went there with 13 black Porsches. And everyone was like, I was in one and the band members and then other stuff. Uh, I, I can't remember who were there. But they asked Villa, did you like the movie? And he, he answered something like, it was a movie. <laughs> 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 And uh, it, it's, I love Matrix. And Matrix, I think, was exactly at that time. And that was kind of like a, a crappier version of Matrix, in a way. It's okay. But, but the idea is there that it's, it's sort of, a, it's it, it, till the point of green color, it's kind of greenish color as well as Matrix is. So uh, it's, yeah, a, yeah. It, it, it's, it was it wasn't a good timing, I think. <laughs> Next to Matrix, <laughs> good good diplomatic answer. I like <laughs> yeah, but, but you should, you should watch it. It's just like uh, it, I think I'm going to watch it because of this uh, podcast because it, it's it, it's not a bad bad movie, but like it's maybe it was a bit boring and uh, so. Sort of, but it, it helped a lot. <clears throat> And yeah, like like I said, it's, it's nuts how popular the band got from that album. It's but deservedly because, like I said, it's such a good album. But so you left the band in New Year's Eve two thousand. But before we touch on why, the next record, Deep Shadows, came out later in two thousand and one. Did you have mm. any involvement in the early stages of that record, or was that all done after you left? Uh, I was listening to those. Someone got me. I got a link to those uh, songs, which were kind of like a demo versions. You know, bootlegs, not bootlegs, but those demos. Mm. But not bootlegs of gigs, but demos of like uh, maybe shouldn't be released. Yeah. But then I, then, then I like uh, I listened to them and I was like, okay, this sounds so familiar. And I jumped to the rehearsing place in my memories, and I remember I was part of. Uh, I remember rehearsing few of the songs salt in our wounds uh, please don't let it go uh, and maybe those and I do remember when we started to rehearsing and I think that was one of the main reasons as well I I was starting to feel so tired because we were <laughs> we were touring and rehearsing non-stop and then you know as the band <laughs> moves on you have to and start to make the next album mm. so with the limited skill and the, the limited uh, growth as being a musician or time to be a rock star and then you put another album there where we were all completely tired and you need to have that specific um, something in you and you know it did like I said when we started this that like I, I only played for three years so it's not enough. I, I didn't have the skills to play different scales or just to jam with the guys. I was the one out, out from that musical family. Now, in a way that they push it, and I didn't feel that bad of it, but like 
Mm, yeah, I was. I, I played a few some of them, but like not, not for example, pretending. Mm. Uh, not enjoy and sorrow. I like that song, but we I didn't play in that one. But, uh, but yeah, a couple of them. It's intriguing because, like I said, it's, it's such a good album as well. I was intrigued if you had any involvement in that one. But obviously, as as we just touched on, then you know you did leave the band New Year's Eve two thousand. What was it that led to you making that? Was it all that pressure and the time and everything? You just couldn't do it anymore. Uh, the, yeah, yeah. It's it's like it was building up the pressure. It's like I, I as in a youth work, I've told these stories as a le- lectures sometimes. So my comparison has been to compare it to you know this the little motorcycles what do you call this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know you mean, yeah. Yeah, they're not motorcycles but the Mopeds. small ones Mopeds, yeah. yeah so if other band could use like the 45 kilometers which is like the limit here and they can go pretty fast and they can just pull that with that one i have to do some stuff that it, it is always going like 80, like, yeah! <laughs> and it's like, it needs to pound. And if it doesn't pound, you need to like completely, you just can't handle that pace all the time too fast. And uh, in the end, I had to make a decision uh, to keep it on the road and to away my hand from the... Zzz, and uh, otherwise, it would have gone to off-road, or I would have, in the worst case, made a decision to drive off-road, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if I would have jumped out from the balcony or anything, but it would have gone so much worse. And I had that one experience of depression before, so I knew that like this is bad. But... <clears throat> It, it, it was meant to be, <laughs> maybe. We all believe in what we believe. We are all entitled to believe what this whole universe thing is. But uh, for me, I needed to have some sort of a reason why this whole story happened to me. And maybe it, later on, I realized that maybe it was just for me to experience that moment. So I can kind of like talk to you of this thing after 20 years and give maybe some sort of reflections to people who suffer from depression or whatever and that sort of like justifies my time in him for myself because i need, i need that justifying yeah yeah bless you Jessica. i mean the fact that you deal with that is you know the fact that you just talk about it so freely so openly is incredible absolutely yeah. incredible yeah. it's you know and i'm sure there's loads of people down the way that list this and go what a legend you know i appreciate i can relate and you know it's absolutely fantastic if he can do it i can do it Mm, so uh, mm. yeah, you're a, you're a very inspirational human, my friend, and uh, I appreciate that you're you know you're talking ever so freely to us. It's it's wonderful. Thank um, you. But just going back to music, so there's a question I like to ask every single musician: uh, <clears throat> as music videos, love them or hate them? I, I love them. Okay. <laughs> That's a very I, right I, answer. <laughs> I, I love them. I love them. If I, I would. But, it would be like hitting myself to face or shooting myself <laughs> to angle because we make music videos at the moment. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> in my company, but still being a uh, music TV generation guy, it's just like, it was, I, I love movies. I love the time. I love my childhood back to the future fan based happy times and at that time music videos came and i was like whoa this is a different channel to uh, like a escapism you know yeah. I, i'm a huge fan of never ending story kind of <laughs> thing is and that that kind of thing so like music video it just penetrates what was the song when they are like the first 3d animation Anyway, so it's just like I love them. I don't know anymore. It's really different now because it's not a, like they don't do it that much. But like, um, I, I, we are going to make a music video tomorrow, and we just did our own uh, two weeks ago, and it's fun. And um, yeah, 
Plus, yeah. you, you are known for having some incredible dance moves, especially <laughs> in the right here in my arms video. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> the fact you did that just made my heart very happy. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've done that dance while watching that video. <laughs> it's just the best. <laughs> it's like you, you, my dad, they called me Dancing Queen. <clears throat> and uh, it's, I don't know if I compensate my skills with that one, but like if, as I wanted, I liked the dance, and at that time, uh, Bur Burton, Burton, who replaced me, he's much more technical guy, and he has more keyboards and more songs than, and, uh, but the songs were so simple that, you know, Wicked Game or It's All Tears or the only, like, three chords, uh, poison girl and uh well join me was a bit more resurrection they are a bit more like you have to concentrate on playing but if you have three chords and you just put the skirt on you put the eyeliners and you mash your head or dance like <laughs> as much as you can and uh that that's that gave me the purpose what I needed to be in the band as well that you you yeah, I was resolved, but <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I remember uh, the keyboard player of uh, Amorphis, Sande, uh, after like eight, 18 years, I went to play in To Die For again, uh, 2011 or somewhere there, and I had the skirt still on. And Sande put under the picture a comment that, like, and the dance goes on. <laughs> and, I was yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I already felt like, okay, the the, the player of Amorphis is like uh, putting a comment for me. Even I know Sande pretty well, but it was so far away from being in a, like an active, uh, high-level uh, public rock and roll life that for me it felt like, oh my God, a celebrity is talking to me, even <laughs> if he sounds kind of like my friend. I love <laughs> it. Daily places, yeah. You get a, if you, when you get a distance to be yourself there, you start to see it whole different way and that's a good thing because it's, it keeps you kind of like a humble to the whole fact that you were in it that you were you have the privilege to carry it. and it is still that i'm justifying myself you know to have that experience and it it helped a lot when i found myself because it was a burden i, I didn't want to be ex-member all my life but i just couldn't know how to handle with the fact that when do i talk about it when is it okay to talk about it? When it came to conversation, sometimes then I see the reactions of the like my peer group, like age, the same age. Everyone knows him, almost everyone. So I see the bit of a change there. Like, okay, you were in a him, and uh, I was thinking that like, do I think that they think I was in a him? And it started to be really messy, and <clears throat> it took me approximately 13 or 14 years to recover from my departure so it was a long road and the youth work sort of was the closer in a way to that that I, I freely could talk about it to youngsters so in between that there was alcoholism there was like I was trying to find the answer from <laughs> both and you know that you can't find the answer from there there were several years of deep depression, which I won again. And um, I was in a dark place, but like still there was a hidden hope and a spark of hope, which never completely went down. So I could ignite it bit by bit and like completely like a, kind of like build a new me because I was taken away from normal me and put into the, like a, what is this? Anyways, a vortex of rock and roll, weird star life. And then I was prone to really, really weird normal life, which was kind of like all the money, which didn't make any difference. There wasn't money anymore. And then I read from the papers and feel like got something around 500,000 euros. And I was like, okay, nice. And that, everything was great. 
and uh, in the end, I won. <laughs> so, and uh, it's easy to say now that I'm, I'm privileged to have every kind of feelings. And even it was hardest when I didn't have any feelings, which is like my definition for depression. That kind of like you're kind of like a living corpse, and life is about feelings. And when you don't have anything, then you just have to survive. And I got the feelings back, and then this is like colorful. It's not like this, and uh, now things are fine. I love that though. Just to piggyback what Tom was saying earlier, that right there is so inspirational. You know, people do suffer with mental health, and not enough people talk about it. And the fact that you mm. know you've come through that other side of it and gone, yeah, I struggled. I'm not going to mm. lie to you. Mm. I, I was in my favorite band of all time. I, I left. I struggled to when I made that transition, but here I am on the other side of it. And it's mm. phenomenal. Mm. And that's why I reached out to you. Yes, you performed on one of my favorite albums of all time, but that wasn't why I reached out to you. It was the fact that, you know, you got through the other side and you now do this youth work and you've used that traumatic time of your life to, in, to mm. help others. And I find that so inspiring. Damn. That, that is kind of like a... If I don't hurt the feelings of my parents or my wife or my friends, which is not that, okay, my friends helped me, but my parents well, how do you say, raised me up kind of like four times from the scratch because I was like mentally sucked out like this. And if you have a kind of like a that gray corpse without like any sparks in your eyes, then you have to just kind of like their pain I understand I can't feel their pain because I've been in the center. I had my own pain, but the pain that your son is slipping away is something mm. it, it's, it must be terrible because they can't reach to my soul because soul is covering itself because that is the only thing that keeps me like uh, staying alive to like uh, having my last spark here. So they can't reach it un until their son came back again, just, to lose again and uh the road was hard and i don't mind anything like i i don't have the stigma i, I can't have it because no one can hurt me because it's open all open i went to psychotherapy for two years and i, I loved it everyone should go to psychotherapy <laughs> it's the best time of life if you can like take two two times a week 45 minutes talking of yourself it's kind of really refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so but like I said, I did want to talk about what you do now, um, which is, you know, so important. And that's your youth work. As you said, you deliver lectures and talks. And what exactly is it you talk about during these lectures and talks that you deliver? <sighs> well, the story of him is a kind of like a, you know, throwing that the, uh, him is not, they don't know him anymore, the youngsters. They they kind of like, uh, it's the whole new generation and him is kind of, uh, the cat is sleeping there, right? just a second. I'm, I'm gonna take a, a, I'm in the room where I have this, this is the join me thing all. Oh, wow. oh, wow. Here is, this is like 5,000 or, this is 10,000 copies. So basically that is from Finland. It's sort of nothing. If you've got 10 million streams or anything. So I can't, it doesn't make any use for me to carry these things anymore. Just a second, here is another one. And this is from uh, Germany and it's 300,000 copies. That's incredible. So, but like it's <laughs> race bread, right? Yeah, yeah. I love it. it's got Pluto Zoltan on it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but but the thing is that they don't see the numbers anymore. They they don't understand that yeah. the albums are are. <laughs> it's pretty hard to sell three hundred oh, uh, millions. I don't know how many him has sold. Uh, sold. But your question is, what I talk for, uh, in lectures, him is to get them realize that the publicity and the experience and feeling is still pretty much the same. If you reach a certain point, you are going to be a public figure. 
And publicity itself <coughs> is not an occupation. It's a side effect of something that you do well. Or there's another road if you go to Big Brother or something, you get the uh, set up status by doing something <laughs> wrong, maybe, <laughs> or <laughs> something stupid. But that's a one road as well. And the social influ media influencers, I thought that it's kind of like a, a few years ago, I was like, okay, they are showing and talking about their life. But it's you really need to work, I think, when you're a high-level influencer, you really have to know what to do. But anyways, the publicity is... I try to teach them and tell them that be ready for the publicity and, and like if, you, if you're trying to reach it. And the other part, the bigger part, is about my mental illness and uh, that it can come back again even if I think I want it for the last time. Maybe not. Maybe I did. I hope I did. But openly tell about my my problems, which I did manage to overcome. And I think that has touched even like when, when the adults come to say that like I have the same kind of problems and it's nice that you talk about them. That's precious for me. Not in a way that of course it's for the youngsters, but I'd like to tell the story as well for the adults because mm. I, I, the best reward for me is that the youngsters are silent <laughs> and that they really they are really listening and uh, yeah and I the best best thing has been when like when the youngster has uh, like they have come to me a couple of them like this is the first time I'm talking about my friend's suicide after my lecture. So basically, that is like, what can you ask anymore? It's kind of like you, you, you don't youth, youth work. You don't do for the numbers. You do for the uh, individuals. And if you can say one, only for a, like a, even for half an hour, to get more to the um, to the goal to get better, it's something kind of like a special thing to do. Absolutely. I, I know exactly what you mean. It's like, you know, it, it doesn't matter if how many people have seen this, but if you touch that one person and help them when they need it, it's all the mm. mass. It's all the mass. But mm. what, what made you want to do this and to open up like you do? Oh, uh, <laughs> 2010, I was asked to make a um, workshop as a musician. There was another band, uh, it was for childcare, uh, like a troubled youngsters or troubled home. I'm working in childcare at the moment, but they are living in an, uh, I don't know the English word, but they are living inside the locked doors. I'm working there as a, um, at the moment, as a being like a uh, youth worker. Yeah. So back then, I wasn't working in any youth work area, but they asked me to go to play keyboards or something like that. I don't know how to play keyboards. I was just like playing in him. I'm like, I don't, I, it's just like, it was, you know, three chords and I was just dancing. So basically, <laughs> I, I, don't know how to, I, I don't know how to teach youngsters. Feeling insecure again. So then I said that like, okay, maybe I can tell my story. And they were, as I said, they were, it was a fire, like a campfire. They were there and the, youth workers were there and everyone was silent and after that one when i left and i was uh, driving back home i started to cry it was like uh, i was like okay and this had something something meaningful and i can put this experience in the top three of my him experience and it was maybe in a way when i was like still trying to you know uh, again using the word justify but like to give some sort of a meaning that why i i had to suffer why i to get to the band why it was me who got to his favorite band and the rock and roll life and that was the start for the lecture part and i didn't do it as a profession it just came for the youth work and then i went there and there and there they asked me there and i went there and uh yeah and then i started to plan it a bit more that you can't talk one and a half hour i made it 45 minutes and practiced it talked it to the wall again and again and again and again to make it more 
you know, here it is. And then I think I'm pretty good in it. And uh, I felt not to be good in playing keyboards, but now I feel I'm quite expert of myself <laughs> and being a ex him member and getting the thing from him still again by talking the story and give uh, my own brains for people to see. <laughs> Have you ever thought about motivational speaking? Hmm. So it, it is, it is. And every, every single time it kind of gives something back for me as well. And, yeah. Uh, it is it is in a way motivational speaking you, you get there is a trauma and it, it is a special story i don't know if you've seen rock star mark Wahlberg. Oh, i love that film like, yeah so mine is a bit like a similar hmm? smaller scale story that you get to play in the favorite band and uh, that kind of stuff so it's a special story especially in Finland, that like I, some person could play in a, one of the most biggest band. So, yeah, uh, I've been building it up to be a motivation. I'm not intentionally in a way that like I, I don't want to consider myself to be. It's This is like shaking all the time when <laughs> I hit the ironing board. So, yeah. <laughs> It's all good. I, I, I don't want to consider myself to be a motivational speaker. It sounds a bit kind of like a, you know, plastic in a way, because yeah. I'm throwing myself so open to audience. I, I It is motivational. It, it is what it is. But like, I, I just want to go there and open myself and then go back home and see what happens. And since so far, it's been okay <laughs> <laughs> they have opened up and uh that's good yeah really good do you find doing this work has helped you in your recovery as well like a form of therapy as which to talk about it so much uh yeah yeah it's like like, like i said i was two years in the psychotherapy and it was it went really deep and uh it's I like. I'm honestly saying that everyone should have the privilege to do it because it would be so much easier to live and to breathe. Because we have thingies we are holding. But uh, having this lecture, I meet people, and uh, every time you meet a person, you have a little confrontation. Like the how do you, the word? There's a every time you meet a person, you learn something new. And if I hmm throw everything out, almost everything, someone will come, some individual. As I said, it's not the numbers, it's the one person. And there's always one new word. And that, what someone says to me after the lecture, or the some feeling, or the someone like, hardly ever dislikes it. But when it comes, it's, again, I'm the little boy there, okay, he doesn't like what I do, I have to learn to live with that one as well. So it is building me every time, and it's really, really good way to still learn who I am. And I completely don't want to know, because this is an adventure. This is kind of like it would be really boring to get the whole idea yeah. <laughs> why, why we are here, because we would reach the goal already. But I, I want to find different kind of methods to like this. It was really easy for me to say yes when you asked because this like I would have watched Netflix and that's kind of like <laughs> I'm really happy that we got this time scheduled here and uh, it's yeah I'm always answering with the side stories there today. <laughs> <than there, but laughs> like, <laughs> we like that though. This we love it, like, yeah, yeah, because obviously people listen to us chat shit for the like, like an hour and a part either side of the interview, so. The more you talk, you the better it is, to be honest with you. So, a people that our listeners keep coming back to and tell us they love the fact that we let our guests talk. So, the more you talk, yeah, it's fantastic. So, please do keep going. It's also, as many side stories as you like, any tangents, <laughs> anything you want, this gets all yours. Just carry on. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, but you mentioned that you've been doing music videos and you have a band at the moment. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So how was all that going? Uh, the band is Reine. It's like a French word for queen, I think. Okay. No, any connection to Queen as a band. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, some weird connection now when we talk to, tonight, but like, uh, uh, yeah, there is a like, we started, my friend, I known him around 30 years, something, but then we went to different directions. He went to Helsinki or whatever, somewhere. And uh, I had my life, and he's, uh, Audio, he's got all the gadgets of the audiovisual world. Oh, wow. And he's my, um, we have a concrete media audiovisual company. We put that um, last November. We, uh, he's, we got two in, in that one. And uh, then I was going to play a feature in their song. But then Mark asked me, the guitar player and the who programs, stuff and like okay i'm just gonna ask this don't have to answer straight away but what if you want to play in the band and i think it was just the right moment it's just like it's been they i said like many many years that there is always a silence in between two songs so i guess there isn't like enough silence (laughs) in between (laughs) those those songs there was to die for there was to die for when I was drunk basically every day. Then there was to die for, I could kicked out, but by the way, it's a good thing. With an email, not a good oh. thing. <laughs> oh. I always kicked out from TV, broadcast live. And, <laughs> anyways, and uh, now I played in To Die For 2010, and when there was some sort of album made, and we still get like a uh, tour in China and uh, that kind of stuff. But now this is the first time I just composed the main um, oh, vocals. I composed and like I did arrangements and uh, I made the lyrics. And uh, now it's this is the first time I'm doing so much. And I, I actually write lyrics and uh, melodies. Wow. So the next song is completely like the lead vocal melody and the lyrics are made by me. Uh, Marco made the like the beginning and programmed it and like I arranged keyboards and Marco can play drums and guitar and plays. And then there is Sanya who is from Croatia originally and she's a singer. So we're <laughs> stunning uh, voice. She's got a great voice. Yeah she's, she's I, I didn't even know her uh, before. And it's so weird that like now we, we haven't seen many times and it's <laughs> we've seen somehow like five times maybe, but we are building this slowly. And of course we wanted people to hear this, but we, do, we haven't done anything to promote it yet. We've just put the video on YouTube and it's something like maybe 2,500 times. But now we are trying to push it to the point that like uh, we can get some sort of feedback and maybe I'm I'm gonna use for the first time now I'm gonna check my card as an ex him keyboard player that if it interests that way that this is the first time that I'm writing lyrics and composing songs. So here it is. Take it only <laughs> or in the middle. So this is the first time in my life that I'm gonna go back to use a bit of that like my past. And it's not an easy thing for me because I'm really humble. Under I talked about universe, and I've been really pressed to the humbleness uh, of the whole thing. So it, it's not an easy thing for me. But like, why not? And still, even if I say why not, I'm thinking, should I do it? Because it's <laughs> been so t- <laughs> because it's been so massive, and it's so like inside me that I can't talk of it. I can't use it. But maybe this is. Like now or never, because there's not going to be another band where I'm going to compose and make, which is so close to that gothic vibes, which I learned to love when I uh, 20 years ago. So we'll see how it goes. And if not, 
not, but like the goal is to get to play in some Gothic festival in Germany because that was such so much fun and I want Marco and Sanya to get that experience. So <laughs> yeah, and uh, that that is like the next <laughs> that that is the thing that I I'm like having in my dreams that you go there festivals i love them anyways i've been there and you go there and you play the gig and then you have the lovely time and the festival area and we'll see we'll see if i get my zoltan good vibes or if the da- <laughs> dance dance let's get started when it comes to new dance moves <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Definitely, there's going to be a skirt. So I'm, I'm not going to lose that one. Maybe, honestly. <laughs> I haven't used a skirt in the music videos, but I have to say that for the first time, working in youth services and getting to the like career, uh, career mode that you go to, like slow with youth worker, producing cultural youth worker. You're starting to change your clothes are like jeans and you're buying them more like to look like normal adults and uh, then snap. Okay, put some eyeliner, put some gothic clothes <laughs> and go to take the promo pics. I had to drink like half a bottle of red wine <laughs> to even. <laughs> and, and there's the promo shoot. And it's like, it, it was so weird. It was just so weird. But I managed to do it, and like when we shot the last video, it was already easier. <laughs> It's just like you don't you don't want to. Oh, you from youth leader in one hour to gothic keyboard player. It's 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 not easy. <laughs> I can imagine to be fair. That's yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so before we start wrapping up here because we're conscious of time if people are listening to this and they're wanting to hear some of the stuff you've been involved in is there like a particular song or two you would recommend it could be him to die for uh reina or anything that we haven't covered is is there anything you might encourage people to check out <laughs> well of course i have to <laughs> make you want to wait for our new road song to get online <laughs> so to say video is uh, on the editing table and uh, it will be up there soon uh, uh, <clears throat> out there soon but like uh, we don't actually have home page or social media yet so I don't know uh, you can follow Yuska Media <laughs> You will get information from there uh, straight away when it's on uh, from Facebook and my Instagram. But you should maybe listen to Die Force Last Breath. That is the song I've composed. That's the outro of the album uh, four. And not many people know that. That is actually I sang that and uh, to the album and I composed it and like I played it. So That's about depression, of course, because I was dealing with it that time. But there is my heart in it. And uh, that's something I, I recommend. Love it. Absolutely love it. So what was I about to say? I've lost myself. There we go. Found myself in my notes. There we go. <laughs> Before we wrap, I did want to add a fun little story. Someone you unknowingly helped. I put I put on social media that we were talking to you, and I had a gentleman named Tom contact me. Not this one, another, a different one. <laughs> um, and he said basically back in the day he was talking he was talking to a girl he was dating, and he actually convinced her that he was the one that played keyboards on Gone with the Sin, and it helped him get somewhere if you know what I mean. So I, I think he might owe you something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I was thinking it's all different, like motiva- <laughs> some sort of mo- no motivational story. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. It's one. For, it's one for this lecture, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> nice, Tom. 
I, w- I wonder what it looks like. <laughs> What's it going to look like? <laughs> 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 oh, I get so happy every time you do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Oh, Stevens, do you have any more questions for our guests? I have do. I have one. Yuska, <laughs> when you were a young lad growing up uh, in Finland, did you ever think that your life would go the way it has? To, did you ever think that you'd be here today? Uh, here? In, uh, no, 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 no. I was, uh, when I was a young, young boy or a young lad before army, uh, as I said earlier, everything was normal. Everything was so like living in just just a normal, normal life. And then hit the depression and changed my whole life. So, uh, <laughs> no, no. You heard the story what I told already. So that, that it's kind of weird. It's kind of like a... Cinderella fairy tale nightmare, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, yeah, I, I just this has been an amazing story and a chapter of like my life that I've been blessed that I've been taking those feelings away and giving them back because, in a way, that this has been great adventure. So being thankful for getting tickets of life to experience this whole thing. And there is still much more to come. And uh, yes, yes, because uh, on November, I'm going to get my first born. So I haven't, oh. <laughs> I'm going to say out loud here for the first time, because I'm not spreading the word in social media, but that is you, you're going to get the news and uh, yeah, there's a new chapter coming. Congratulations. <laughs> That's amazing. amazing. Thank you. That's awesome. <laughs> so <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> and hey, we tried, we tried for seven years. So that, that was another dark, hard road. So you, you, that's what I'm saying. Like, did you ever think of as a lad to come to this point? Life gives you curveballs all the time, but <laughs> you know you just <laughs> have to move on. And if you're not, that's okay as well. But it just yeah. makes you humble. <laughs> we see how how little. <laughs> 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 we we experience this world. I'll my best to be a good father. <laughs> I'm sure you'll absolutely smash it out the park. You'll be amazing, my friend. Oh, yeah, you will, you'll be great. Absolutely great. You know, you just got to show us, you just got to keep fighting, no matter what, no matter what. It always comes good at the end, all the time. Mm-hmm. So that's mm-hmm. fantastic news. I'm really happy for you. Thank you. Thank and like you. Say, and like they say, good things happen to good people. So mm-hmm. here you are, my friend. You're an amazing, really inspirational. I've, I've absolutely loved talking to you. Yeah. But before Thank we let you, you go... Me. Do you have any plugs, social medias, websites, anything you want people to go check out? Uh, well, yuskamedia.com, there is an English version as well. <clears throat> and uh, it's for the, like, selling the lectures. But at the, at the present time, I hope you will go to Yuska Media Facebook site because there there is English post as well. And that's the main... Uh, you can find the news from Reine until the point we release and we put the all social media for that one. I got Facebook account as well and there is 4,800 people there but it's going to go close to 5,000 soon but like uh, an Instagram which is Juska lower line Salminen so I am I am like more telling stories of him nowadays because maybe I just need still. But another story is about the beginning uh, and that's my boy who is going to come. So him is... (laughs) Him is then. I said, I have to say in like last word, I said in some point that I think I need to get my own baby so I can close the chapter with him. So... (laughs) Maybe this is the time now. Maybe. <laughs> In a good way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing how much having a child can can heal you. 
and help. Mm-hmm. It is. Mm-hmm. I've I've gone for it myself. I, I completely get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. I, I have no idea what I'm going to do. But like, we'll see. We'll soon find out, my friend. <laughs> Just get, thank you so much for doing this. It means the absolute world. We've had an absolute blast talking to you. It's been amazing to hear your stories. And the, the fact you've just opened up to us about all your struggles and stuff it means the world. It really does. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been really, really nice. And uh, I feel really comfortable. As I said to you in the first moment, like I checked your, checked your site. And when I feel good, I think good will happen. And you gave me good feelings from your side thank you so much <laughs> thank you that means no, it's all. Not, yeah thank you so much Jessica. seriously this has been so much fun thank you so much for being a part of this we've absolutely loved talking to you it's been amazing i wish you all the best with your newborn thank in november you. and uh we'll keep in touch anyway so i look forward to hearing all about it and, we, will, uh, yeah. we will definitely absolutely. thank you thank you to you both it's been really nice you are really really nice people and uh, oh. i really enjoyed this Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, enjoy, my friend. Enjoy the rest of your night. I imagine you're probably going to watch Netflix or go to bed or something now. Or... <laughs> uh, I don't even know. Was it like one and a half hour, two hours? I can spend. I'm going to watch something. I'm on holiday. But hey, before before I go, I still want to. <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't even go right. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it was great. <laughs> Because I can hear the bit in the song in my head every time you do it. It makes it even better. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. <laughs> oh, okay. Appreciate oh, Thank you so much. <laughs> Look after yourself. Take care, fella. See you later. Goodbye. See you. Bye-bye. 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 Just a oh, beautiful, beautiful conversation. I love this one so much. It is great. And like I said earlier, we've got three insane interviews still, like two insane interviews still to come. So we're just smashing out the park. But... This one was very, um, just wonderful. It was very heart-wrenching, you know, just the stuff that we talked about. Um, Yuska is just an absolutely, genuinely wonderful human being. And that dance will make me happy forever. And the fact that he did the dance (laughs) at the end of the interview, just for me, made me even happier. Just... Oh. And we we really hope that you guys enjoy listening to it as much as we did recording it. Yuska, thank you so much, my friend. 